from virtual to real. Nissan presents GT Academy Race to Dubai. Over the next few months, the selection of Nissan's youngest racing drivers will be training for one of the world's toughest endurance races, the Dubai 24 Hours. We'll follow their highs and their lows as they attempt to make the grade in the world of professional motorsport. But unlike your average racer, yes, there's one thing that makes these guys unique. They've all learned their craft on a PlayStation. This is the race to Dubai. Since 2008, GT Academy has been turning PlayStation gamers into racing drivers. We take the world's top Gran Turismo racers and select the quickest, most promising driver. A few weeks later, you're a works driver of Nissan. Well, the programme has already produced three professional racing drivers since it began four years ago. It was a fantastic prize and, you, you know, the opportunity of my life to, to become a racing driver. Fifteen months ago, I was, I, I never stepped into a race car, never been to a racetrack before. Really amazing and sometimes I still can't believe it. And in 2012, Wolfgang of Wright from Belgium wowed the panel of expert judges, ruling race camp to become European GT Academy winner. <laughs> Oh, it's the happiest time of my life. It's incredible what's happened. A beautiful day. Well, someone who knows exactly what Wolfgang is about to embark on is 2010 winner Jordan Tresson, who beat 1.2 million gamers to become the second GT Academy winner. I started in GT4 Cup with Argent Motorsports. We managed to finish fourth in the driver's ranking. So for the first year, I was pretty pleased with that. Last year, we moved to Blanc Endurance Series. We won spot 24 hours, and on five races, we won two times and finished four times on the podium. And in 2012, he joined French team Super Tech Nissan to compete in the LMP2 category of the World Endurance Championship. Really impressed that Nissan has me to drive in LMP this year. You know, after only two years uh, since I won GT Academy, being there in Le Mans in, in the World Endurance Championship is just amazing. So this was a, a big step, but uh, a really nice one. A LMP car is totally different from a GT car. Uh, for me, a GT car feels more natural because it's, it's what I'm used to drive. And the LMP car with the downfalls, without ABS, with the carbon brakes also, it's really a different world. It's much faster also. So stepping up from GT4 is quite a big one. I'm still a gamer at home, and I like to, to train on new tracks um, on Gran Turismo. It's still where I come from, it's sort of my roots. So you, I need to still remember about this. Yeah, I'm still playing when I have time and I still enjoy it. Next stop for Jordan and Sigatek is Sao Paulo, Brazil. And so far, the championship has visited Spa in Belgium, Sebring International Raceway in Florida, a legendary 24 hours of Le Mans and Silverstone, of course, as well. Stop five at the Interlagos racetrack in Sao Paulo is considered one of the most challenging and exciting on the Formula One circuit. And so today, Jordan and Sigatek hope to put the disappointing season that they've had so far behind them and finish on the podium. Our car's already getting a little bit excited, a little bit further back. Lights go off and the racing begins. Well, the race starts well for the Frenchman Frank Mayer battling it out with Oak Racing for second spot. Frank finishes his stint in a strong third position. The LMP2 class and it's Jordan's turn behind the wheel. But after only a couple of laps, Jordan and Singletek once again having uh, something of an issue out there. Problems for the 23, Singletek Nissan and just heading to the pits, it's, or just been in the pits, so uh, not a good moment as ever. Three wheels on their wagon. Jordan Tresson and the safety car was deployed at this point. 
two safety cars remember in the world endurance championship and that would be to recover not only the wheel but also jordan tresson's car that has stopped Interlagos was really disappointing because uh, we were second or third. Uh, we were fighting definitely for a podium, maybe for a victory. And when I jump in the car, uh, I lost the wheel. We couldn't bring the car back to the pits, so we, we had to retire. It was really a shame, but uh, that's life, so this kind of thing happens. Well, this season uh, for Synetic has been a really good one. But unfortunately, these small things have made that we have to retire. Or, um, we didn't finish in a good place. But with three stops left in the World Endurance Championship, it's all left to race. Yeah, so everything to race for. Catch up with Jordan and Singletech in Bahrain for the next stop of the World Endurance Series. And from Brazil to Silverstone, and with the 2012 European winner of the GT Academy, Wolfgang Wright, started on his journey into the world of professional motorsport last week. The hard work started with a grueling fitness assessment. It's not a bad beginning, but I still have a lot of works. You have to push uh, more than you have done before. Well, along with his gluing fitness regime, Wolfgang hopes to gain his international seat license. Without it, he'll not be allowed to race in the Dubai 24 hours. Well, to obtain that license, he needs 12 signatures which can be collected for competing and finishing races. Today, he's go hoping to get one of those signatures at his first competitive race at Brands Hatch. Very excited. I know that the only goal for today is to finish. We don't know the car, we don't know the track, and in one hour, it's the practice session. Well, joining Wolfgang on his quest for an international license is the 2012 Russian GT Academy winner, Mark Shalitsky and German GT winner Peter Pizera. The whole experience in GT Academy was very fantastic. For me, it's like uh, they put me out of my normal life and throw me into a dream. Yeah, maybe half a year ago, I am sitting in sofa and playing the Grand Turismo 5. But today, I drive real car, it's difficult. Before I start this GT Academy program, I have a normal job as an industrial mechanic. It was a very nice job, but uh, you can't compare it to a race driver. It's a different world. I'm working in a fish port, uh, fill different documents for export fish in different countries. Uh, my life uh, was not special, really. Uh, it's a very nice feeling. It's incredible. I. Uh, I hope I can hold it so long as I can because it's very like a dream. For me it's one chance, only this chance and I want to take it. Well, for the remainder of the season Wolfgang, Mark and Peter will be racing for RGN Motorsports. An experienced team headed by team principal Bob Neville who have brought uh, through all previous GT Academy winners, remember. Well, along with the RJN team, helping to guide the boys through will be their mentors, their driver Christian Van and Rob Jenkinson. Uh, we've been working with them for a few days now, some testing sessions at uh, Silverstone, and they've all got potential. But they've all got potential to push too hard as well. Our job is not only to make them faster, but it's to give them all, just all the tools they need to do everything to, to make them the, the complete package. They need to accept that it's a, a long road and the learning curve needs to be vertical. So we need to just calm them down and, and ensure, as Christy said, that they achieve the objective from the weekend, and that's to finish the race and get the license signed. It really will be a love-hate relationship. Um, you know, we'll, we'll love them and nurture them the whole time, and they'll hate us sometimes. Well, with the team and the mentors backing them all the way, it's time for the boys to hit the Brands Hatch track for their first competitive qualification. Well, in many ways it went very well because they did the full 30 minutes. The downside, two of them, Mark and Peter, were called to the clerk of the horse's office after, straight after. They were both in, in hot water, basically. Peter was second in the 24 car and uh, was exceeding track limits. He was called to the clerk of the course and, and was told the error of his ways there. Meanwhile, in the 23 car, Christian's car, uh, we had Mark, who uh, was blissfully unaware of the marshals waving yellow flags at him, so 
he's had a stern warning from the clerk of the course also. I'm going to have to speak to them. That can lead to them not getting a signature. You don't just finish a race. You have to satisfy the clerk of the course that you've driven in a manner which is safe and satisfactory. So with the boys upsetting their mentors and the new boss in their first race meet, nearly jeopardising their chance to race, they're now off to the best start, uh, not off to the best start, I should say, after the stern words of Bob ringing in their ears, taking them to the X-Formula 1 circuit for a two-hour race. A big challenge for them. They haven't done this off-distance competitively. Seven into the race, we had a safety car period, and uh, Wolfgang, unfortunately, over, overtook one of the, the lap cars, or a car that was about to lap, so we're just waiting to hear if we're going to get a penalty for that. Hopefully it went unnoticed, because it would be a shame to have a drive-through penalty, because that would really ruin the race strategy for us. But the marshals did spot Wolfgang's error, and he's called in for a drive-through penalty. Team principal Bob Neville is obviously furious with Wolfgang's carelessness, which affects their race strategy and could jeopardise his chances of getting a signature. I was up to the clerk of the course several times through uh, and running, running off the circuit a bit pushing too hard a little bit and uh, in the case of Wolfgang overtaking under the yellow which caused his drive-through penalty. I didn't make the right decision on the track. Everything went pretty well except that. I just hope they've taken it on board that they don't have to push quite so hard at this stage. There will come a time when I'll tell them to push and I want to see but at the moment just learning like a, like a race like that, just learning about racing Full stop is all they need to do. But luckily for the boys, they finished the race and received the all important signatures despite Wolfgang's penalty and Mark and Peter's errors. In future, these kind of mistakes could cost them the chance of getting the international license they need to race in Dubai. Despite their errors, Wolfgang and Peter even managed a podium finish on the second. I learned a lot from this experience, really. I will be a lot more, uh, how do you say? Careful. Yeah, I'm generally happy because they didn't go off, they didn't go into the gravel, they, they didn't hit anything, they avoided people hitting them, so all good from there. Well, coming up next on Race to the Rival, Craig Peter and Mark go for their next set of signatures in Anglesey. That's a big weekend for Jan and RJN as they go for the British GT3 Championship title at Donington. From virtual to real, Nissan presents GT Academy Race to Dubai.